Hi all, I'm Amber, welcome back to Cat Speed. Today I'm going to be sharing with you two book reviews. The first book that I'll be reviewing is Bride's Head Revisited by Evelyn Waugh. I'm going to be so this is about Charles Ryder, who at the beginning of this book is a soldier during World War II, I believe, and his um, regiment is being moved, and when he arrives at the place that they're staying at, he realizes it's a place from years ago named Bride's Head, and he starts recalling his time with Sebastian when he was at Oxford, and the family that he started to become involved with. This was a really hard book to get through because I felt that I never could get a grasp on what this story was supposed to be about. Was it supposed to be about Sebastian and Charles' relationship that was more than friendship and in a time when being gay could land you in jail or worse? Was it supposed to be about religion, which he seemed obsessed about? Was it supposed to be the wealth and class and how it was starting to fall apart at that time. Things were changing e economically and socially, I think. There's all these things going on, but I never really felt like there was anything solid to grasp on. And it was just a lot of muddled up pieces thrown together with each of these parts. I felt like the characters were flat. I didn't feel like the characters were three-dimensional. It was just, especially Charles, I think, because he's a narrator, I felt like he didn't really seem to care about anybody or anything. It was just all about him in the later years when he's married. And he comes home from like two years gone. And his wife wants him to go and spend time with his children. But he acts like she was in the wrong for asking. And he never does. It, it was just like, that just so pissed me off. And especially because I spent this whole book through his eyes and he just couldn't give a crap. Then there's this obsolete ending that ends up again back with religion which didn't really make sense throughout the book. Like what was the point of this religious discussion? Especially because Julia is, was never a religious person and then all of a sudden she's religious and it was just so bizarre and it really really ruined anything that I had going for it. The last thing I want to talk about is the, is I'm going back to the first part of this book where Sebastian and Charles were in a relationship. And I put that in quotation marks because I never felt like I got a solid grasp on that. It never really felt like they were in much of a relationship in the romantic sense. I, like I got that they were supposed to be, there was hints all the way through, but it never was in the open. Wa never seemed to be willing to actually get into the issues of that time that he himself was living in, where it was a crime for for them to be gay and that you could be in prison. And this was in 1945 that this was published and that was still a thing. And so I, always, I found it bothersome that he wasn't willing to get into that and especially because that's a major issue that was a major thing and he puts that into the story the fact that they're gay but he doesn't actually go far enough with it, i think that if they're supposed to be in a relationship actually talk about the relationship actually make it clear that they are in a relationship i never once got that sense and it was really weird that it was seemingly tolerated that they were in a, a relationship and it seemed like ev everybody in their social circle seemed to know that they were and that they were gay so it just didn't make a lot of sense and that definitely bothered me the most about this book and i felt like this book dealt with the issues that he was bringing up through the story very vaguely and in a muddled sort of fashion i did like his writing style so i want to try at least one more of his works and see if maybe this was just the rare dud in the complete works of his. So I'm going to try him again and we'll see what happens. But for Bright Time Revisited by Evelyn Waugh, I had to give it two stars. The second and last book that I'll be reviewing for you guys is Third Degree by Greg Isles. This is about Laurel Shields who wakes up one 
wanting to find her husband, destroying his office in what seems to be a fashion of trying to find something that he's lost. And at this point, she doesn't really care because she has her own issues, which is that she is pregnant and she doesn't know if it's her husband's or if it's her lover's. She goes off to work and when she returns midday, she finds her husband still there, which is unusual, and craziness ensues when she is when she ends up being held hostage. This is a pretty average, predictable thriller. I thought he handled the tension well and he kept me wanting to get to the next page to find out where this was gonna lead. Was there more to this than meets the eye? And for that aspect, I did enjoy it for what it was, but I thought he took too long to get there. I think he could have introduced the characters and give the, the backstory throughout what was happening a whole lot more and then what was going on. I thought that there's a little bit of repentance going on with, you know, like she kept repeating that she was I get the fact that she's probably a little bit in shock because she didn't expect it, but it was like there's this sense of repetitiveness of it, like the author thought we couldn't get it. There's this moment when she's being held hostage that I felt was very awkward and uncomfortable and didn't really make sense and that had to do with the porn that he finds on her computer and I felt like he, the author, took it a little bit too far there where it didn't really make sense and it didn't make sense. Even though, yeah, the person that was holding her hostage was losing his mind a little bit. Like, it seemed like he was losing his mind. And I get that he was trying to build that up there, but I don't think it would have gone that far. I think even as he was kind of losing it, he still was holding on to something that was part of him before this happened. And I just didn't think that he would have acted that way. And it just didn't really make sense. And like I said, it went too far there. The very last thing that I will say about this book is that I felt like he was rationalizing her affair. Like, they love each other, so therefore it's okay that they're cheating on their spouses. They get together, so therefore it's okay that that their children are going to be damaged by what they did, what they did, what happened, and the end result of it all. I also felt kind of bothered by the fact that her a lover, who whose son is, has special needs, it, that's all he thinks about. He has not only his son, but a daughter. And instead of wanting both of them, he only wants his son in the end. And this is talking about a custody battle that was sort of going on throughout with him. And I get why he wanted him. And then I get when a child has special needs and if you have more than one child, and one of them is in special needs, your focus is going to be more on the child that does have special needs. I get that. But it was like that one child was completely forgotten in the story. And that really bothered me. In the end, it was all about her having her happily ever after ending, which was a little bit too much. And I didn't think that ending was the kind of ending I was going to be, nor did I care for that kind of ending. So. In the end, I gave this three stars because for what it was, it was okay. It kind of read like a film to me, like it felt like it should have been filmed and maybe it would have worked better that way. But overall, there was just too many issues for it. So even though I gave it three stars, it's more like a two star. But I had to give it three stars because I, it, kept the, it kept me turning the pages, it kept me hooked to find out what was going to happen in the end. That was my reviews on Fry's Heavy Visit by Evelyn Love Walsh and 30 Degree by Greg Isles. Comment down below if you read either of these two books. I would love to talk to you down below about them. Thank you all so much for watching and keep smiling.